Hi, I'm Siri. Welcome to Do Lunch Online. We're at the Frank H. McClung Museum located on the University of Tennessee campus in Knoxville, Tennessee. The presentation today is Human Origins, Searching for Our Fossil Ancestors. The question, where did we come from, has interested theologians for millennia and scientists for centuries. In the permanent exhibition, Human Origins, the McClung Museum's presentation is a comprehensive overview of the scientific understanding of the last six million years of the evolution of hominids, humans, and our ancestors. Guiding the museum in the creation of this exhibition was Andrew Kramer, head of UT's Department of Anthropology. Kramer is a physical anthropologist specializing in paleoanthropology, the study of human evolution. He has conducted fieldwork and research in Indonesia, focusing on our fossil hominid ancestor, Homo erectus, who lived there more than one million years ago. The exhibition employs numerous casts of fossil hominids, artists' reconstructions of life scenes, maps, diagrams, videos, and artifacts of special interest. Our life-size and extremely lifelike reconstructions of two hominids by artist, John Girk. The earliest is named Lucy, after the Beatles song, Australopithecus afarensis, discovered, in Hater, Ethiopia, and lived, 3 to 3.5 million years ago, and the other is that of Turkana Boy, a young Homo erectus discovered at Lake Tubana, Kenya, and lived, 1.5 million years ago. Humans are just one of millions of animal species on this planet. Initially, the new exhibit places humans in the context of life on Earth by displaying our commonalities and differences with other mammals, particularly other primates. Humans are primates, and our closest living relative is the chimpanzee, with whom we share more than 99% of our genetic material. This means that chimpanzees and humans share a recent common ancestor. And current evidence indicates that ancestor lived 4 to 8 million years ago. From this common ancestor, living chimps and modern humans arose. The remainder of the exhibit traces the evolutionary history of humanity since that divergence. The earliest sites are in Africa, where hominid evolution began. Between 1 to 2 million years ago, populations of early humans spread out of Africa to populate the Old World from Europe to China, and Southeast Asia. In addition to the 14 exhibit cases, two interactive flipbooks answer commonly asked questions about science and evolution. Inseparable from the story of human biological evolution is the emergence of human culture, tool-making, use of fire, language, art, and religion. These subjects are also addressed in the exhibition. Anthropology Literally the study of humans, is an extremely broad and diverse field concerned with every aspect of the human condition, past, present, and future. Students studying anthropology at the University of Tennessee learn of this breadth and diversity by taking courses in cultural, biological, and archaeological anthropology. Research conducted by the faculty and graduate students of the department is as wide-ranging, both topically and geographically, as the field itself. Homo floresiensis, Flores Island, Indonesia, approximately 17,000 years ago. One of the most fascinating and startling discoveries of the last several decades was made on the Indonesian island of Flores in 2003. There, in the Liang, Bura, cave, scientists unearthed the remains of a tiny hominid that the international press soon dubbed the Hobbit. The most complete individual was remarkable for a number of reasons. It had a very small, eight-sized brain and a diminutive body to match and estimated to be just over three feet tall. Most surprising of all was the fact that these little hominids were living on this island as recently as 17,000 years ago. Based on their small size and the primitive natures of their limb proportions, wrist, and foot anatomy, 
Most scientists accept the hobbits as representatives of a new hominid species called Homo floresiensis. As soon as human populations started living in the North's temperate zones, natural selection for lighter skin began when exposed to ultraviolet, solar, radiation, human skin synthesizes vitamin D, which is critical for calcium, metabolism, and a healthy skeleton. Too much melanin in the skin, coupled with reduced sunlight in the cloudier north, would have greatly increased the incidence of rickets. This disease results in bone formation from vitamin D deficiency. A 1997 study reported that scientists successfully identified, isolated, and sequenced DNA from the original Neanderthal specimen discovered in Germany in 1856. While the study has not resulted in consensus on the debate, technological advances have the potential to resolve the Neanderthal question. Modern humans existed throughout the old world by 30,000 to 25,000 years ago. Unlike archaic hominids, modern humans feature tall, globular skulls, smaller faces, and teeth, a more delicate mandible, lower jaw, an obvious chin, and thinner limb bones, and skulls. Bison, with turned head, cast, original in reindeer antler, France, 13,000 years ago. The sculpture was part of the otlatl, a device for throwing a spear, statuette of a woman, cast, original in mammoth ivory, France, 23,000 years ago. The anatomical exaggerations of Venus figurines suggest that the statuettes served as fertility, fetishes, statuette of a woman, cast, original in stone, Austria. 27,000 years ago. This is perhaps the most famous of the small sculptures called Venus figurines. Head of a woman. Cast, original in mammoth ivory. France, 25,000 years ago. Some scholars interpret the head covering as a hair net or netted snood rather than hair. The Frank H. McClung Museum, Human Origins, Searching for Our Fossil Ancestors, a comprehensive overview of the scientific understanding of the last six million years of the evolution of hominids, humans, and our ancestors.